Roger. Oh, Roger. Just Roger. <laughs> Not you. Sir. Lovely to so see nice you. So nice to see you. Thank <laughs> you. Oh, I know. I know you're about to start a live tour, and it's called An Evening with Roger Moore. Mm -hmm. So, what could I expect of an evening with Roger Moore? Two hours good sleep. I, <laughs> I say we should put on the, the, the billing. Uh, throw away your still knocks. <laughs> Not off here. <laughs> what would you to expect? I. I talk about what, everything in my life. And after 86 years, there seems to be a lot of things to talk about, if I can remember them. What sort of questions do people ask? What's your favorite Bond girl? Oh, I'll scrub that one off then. <laughs> <laughs> then and what do you say? Children, children always, uh, I make up all sorts of things. Uh, children always, or young people always say, what's your favorite gadget? So, Barbara Bach, as your favourite? Yes, Barbara Bach. Yeah? Bach. OK. The lady will have a Bacardi on the rocks. For the gentleman, vodka martini, shaken, not stirred. Touché. The watch, one of the watches, as your favourite gadget, what has it been? Yes, the magnetic watch. Yeah, the magnetic watch. You brought to your bond generosity of spirit and a humour and, of course, very debonair. Hey, but it was very different from Sean Connery's bond. Take a little. Well, sure, as Sean, as, as, as Daniel Craig today, looks like a killer. Mm. I squeeze him to death with my eyes. <laughs> How do you I, squeeze somebody to death with your eyes? Going, oh, oh, not so hard, <laughs> please. Raising one eyebrow, perhaps. You can I still don't think do that. I, I, well, do you think that gravity's taken over completely? <laughs> I thought that, that your bond... Well, I suppose the template was Simon Templar and the Saint, wasn't it? A little bit, only without the guns and the weapons. Um, you know, very suave, using your fists a bit if you needed to fight. Well, it's, it's exactly the same as I played Ivanhoe 400 yes. years before. So you're saying you've played the same, uh, played it the same way for all of them? They all come out the same. Do you think? Yeah. It's the easiest way <laughs> <laughs> you know, to all that acting business. You're so self-deprecating about your acting. Well, I've seen, I've seen myself. Why? People, Why? Uh, well, I've, well, in a couple of things I've been allowed to act. Uh, but usually it's because I look sort of heroic, which I suppose I am not. Was that a bit frustrating? Uh, well, I suppose that was acting, actually, to, to look heroic, mm. and not to sort of blink too much. I know when Barbara Bach, when we were doing uh, Spy Who Loved Me, and it one of those beautiful sets that Ken Adams constructed, which the minute you see a beautiful set, you know it's going to get blown up in a Bond film. And before it, that, all the explosions started, my uh, makeup and came to me and he said, here you are, Roger, and he came in the box and I put my earplugs in. And Barbara said, what are you doing that for? I said, because we're going to have a lot of explosions. Hmm. I said, now when I move, move at the same time, we, we have to really move. She said, well, I thought if I stood near you, I'd be safe. I said, no, it's James Bond they're trying to kill. <laughs> so when I run, run with me. <laughs> uh, and I was heroic there. She was she really drowned and I dragged her out. It was worth it. Ringo Starr's very grateful. <laughs> so as well as your anecdotes about Bond, which you'll be regaling the audience with when you go on tour, you've written a book, another book. It's called Last Man Standing. I just happened to have a copy of the book handy. As you do. And if you see, we're all sitting in Gregory the wrong chairs. Kirk, Trevor Howard, David and, Niven. And I'm actually the last man sitting, not standing. Oh. But they, they all unfortunately are dead. And oh. I write, I talk about them. It must be so difficult when you're so close to people like David Niven um, and such good friends not to have them around anymore. Well, David I, was the first of my friends that really affected me in the death. 
and uh, you know, he had motor neuron disease. Oh, he, he was in the high street of Stadt, and you know, the man said, ah, David, how are you? And David said, all right, I, I've got motor neuron disease. And so, so oh, yes, I've got a new Mercedes. <laughs> and David started to laugh. And he laughed, and when he laughed, he laughed and was very close to tears, and there yeah, I miss him. In the book, you, where you talk about David Niven and Trevor Howard and Gregory Pegg, um, you say that you think that they're looking down on you from heaven. Mm. Is, do, you, do you have a, a religious faith at all? Uh, well, yes. I was asked by a dialogue director once in California, do you believe in God? I said, uh, yes, I, I believe in intelligence. I believe that we are created uh, for some purpose. And I think that the purpose probably is to, to learn, to experience, to use that. He said, well, that's fine, but some of us are born a little more fortunate than others because of circumstance of birth, mm. of geography, yes. He said, he said, you're very fortunate. He said, you're, you're six foot. Uh, so why do you only stand five foot ten? Stand six foot two. What does he mean by that? He said that you've been given this and it's wrong not to do it, do mm. something with it. You've been through diabetes, you're diagnosed with mm. diabetes, pneumonia? Double oh, pneumonia. Double I've pneumonia. had that twice. Have you? Oh, I'm an old hand at it. Pacemaker fitted? Yeah. What gets you through those periods of, of illness? I mean, you, you mentioned that you do have a belief in, in something, in, in some oh, God. Is that, well, I, does that help when you become ill? Or uh, well, I don't, I don't think I'm, I'm frightened. Uh, I think it's going to be a big adventure. You're going to find out. Mark, nobody's ever come back to tell us. Your mother taught you to be humble and have some humility and mm -hmm. to look at where you were born and that others hadn't got the same. And, mm -hmm. and I suppose you took that philosophy into your UNICEF work, didn't you? Well, I was, I was very fortunate enough that uh, Audrey Hepburn was a friend and virtually a neighbour. And she called me one morning and asked me if I would go to Amsterdam with her to co-host uh, co the Danny Kaye International Children's Awards, which was a, a UNICEF programme. She was an extraordinary, warm, passionate lady. Um, you know, that's one of the things that I might see her on the other side. Mm. And what do you think you've learned in 86 years? Have you got life lessons? I've learned that it's better to smile in adversity. I've learned to appreciate all my mother's maxims that I cried because I had no shoes until I met a man who had no feet. So your motto is embrace every moment. Yeah. You live, seem to be. Yeah, live today and don't tread on too many toes. Mm. Live every day and don't try and tread on too many toes. Yeah. And every day may be your last. <gasps> <laughs> but not today. Not today. Sir Roger Moore, it's been such a pleasure talking Sir, to you. Thank, thank you so you. much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for your time. The delightful Roger Moore on living life and losing friends. And just after we recorded that interview, he lost another close colleague, Richard Keel, who was Jaws in two Bond films. Roger said he was totally distraught. Keel played villains in Moonraker and The Spy Who Loved Me.